If you're struggling to understand why this love thing isn't working for you and have even started to feel like great love may not be in the cards for you, if you've been betrayed, ghosted, ignored, rejected, breadcrumbed, or have been out of the dating experience for a while, today I want to share a few bits of humble yet necessary love advice that I've learned first as a human who has lived, loved, and suffered, and then as a relationship coach helping women attract epic love from every walk of life over the last 13 years. This is the love advice I wish someone had shared with me earlier in life, and this is for you. If you're watching this video right now, my heart goes out to you. I can infer you're the type of human being who's not willing to give up and just hope for something better, but you're willing to do something about it. So the fact that you're here watching this video the fact that you haven't thrown in the towel, the fact that you haven't said, I'm done with this, but you're still learning, you're still improving, you're still out there doing something or getting prepared to do something gives me so much pride in you and you have my deepest respect for showing up right now, right here. I'm going to share with you a few bits of advice I wish someone had shared with me earlier in life. And my deepest hope is that you do something applicable today. If you go through the inspirational aspect of watching a video, and don't do something practical, that's better than not doing something. But if you actually take some step, one step today that gets you closest to what you want, I'll feel so grateful to have recorded this for you. The first bit of advice I wish someone had shared with me earlier in life is that this, meaning love, shouldn't be easy. And the reason why I say this is because we have today in human history the deepest, most profound, most ambitious definition of what a relationship passionate, fulfilling relationship is, that's never taken place in human history. So when we think that this should be natural, when we think that this should be easy, we do ourselves so much harm because the natural consequence of thinking that way is if it should be natural and easy and we don't have it, then something must be wrong inside of us. So I'm sure that if you're watching this, at some point you've thought there's something wrong inside of me. Why am I not getting this? And you're not getting this because you have a very deep definition of what you want and haven't developed yet the skills, and it's not your fault because no one has taught you the skills on how to get there. The skill of attraction, the skill of communication, the skill of, as great therapist Terry Real talks about, three different stages of relationships, always unending cycle, harmony, disharmony, and repair. How to navigate through this with grace. How to recognize who is compatible with you and who isn't. How to express your needs in ways that are healthy. How to set boundaries. No one probably has taught you the skills, but yet you have a very ambitious definition that if your ancestors were to look at it, they probably laugh saying, does that even exist? So here we are, imperfect human beings who have been born in a society that has fed us with movies, magazine, even comic books from an early age, that epic love is a thing of the day. And here we are experiencing pain and grief and anguish and frustration and saying, I don't see it. I'm not feeling it. And I'm not seeing examples of that showing up in my life. And it's not that it's not possible is that for you to experience a deeper level of romantic experience that anyone in your lineage, you need to learn the skills to be able to experience it. We have a society that's slightly entitled thinking I should be getting this. But if you go from there's something wrong in me to I haven't yet learned the skills that I need to learn, then that's a much more proactive and much more realistic and scientific way of thinking about life. So what are the skills you need to learn? Where in your cycle is the system broken? Is it in the attraction phase? Is it in the connection phase? Is it in the setting boundaries? It learning where you are maybe needing some help and learning how to break that cycle and how to get new skills is the biggest recommendation I can give you right now. I have hundreds of videos on different skills in my YouTube channel. If you haven't watched them, I recommend watching them. But suffice it to say that if you go from flaw in me to skill I need to learn, you'll do yourself a lot of service going forward in life. Second piece of advice that I wish someone had shared with me earlier in life is that heartbreak is inevitable. As a great poet, philosopher David White talks about, there is no life without heartbreak. You can learn, and that's the goal, to figure out how to get your heart broken through higher quality experiences or through human beings who are worthy of heart the heartbreak that you're about to go through instead of human beings that shouldn't happen in your life to begin with. So what I'm here to say is that if you're trying to safeguard your heart, thinking that by not putting yourself out there ever again, that you will avoid heartbreak. I'm here to give you some bad news. It's not going to happen. Why? Because sometimes the loneliness, sometimes the pain, 
sometimes the regret, sometimes the fear will also be its own form of heartbreak. So if heartbreak is inevitable, then let's figure out a way to consciously create more fulfilling heartbreak, if you want to call it that, or less unconscious heartbreak, right? There's a difference between you connecting with someone, not betting him properly, him ended up being a narcissist, you had sex early on, you got super attached, and that ended up breaking your heart. That's one level of heartbreak. The other heartbreak would be you consciously bet someone, he's compatible, you go through the stages, you marry this person, the person gets cancer and dies. That's horrific heartbreak, but there's not much you can do to avoid that one. There's something you can do to avoid the first kind. And that's what this whole channel is all about. Avoiding unnecessary heartbreak and giving you some tools so you can experience what you want much faster. Third bit of advice I wish I might share with me earlier in life is that life and relationships are seasons. So what does that mean? That many of you right now might find yourself in the winter of romantic relationships where everything is dark and the sun is barely shining and it's really cold and it's frigid and you're not sure when the sun will shine again. And you may even be telling yourself that it's not going to shine again. I remember me personally going through heartbreak, getting divorced four years ago and some days thinking this pain will never end and learning to love myself again and loving someone else again. That was a journey that I wouldn't wish the pain on anyone. But the outcome of that was to really understand the foundation of going through seasons of life more gracefully. And in my humble opinion, it is to learn to be kind and compassionate and forgiving yourself for what you did and you didn't do, right? There were times in my life where, especially going through that cycle, where I, I was so harsh on myself going through not just the pain of the heartbreak, but the shame of being a love coach who gets divorced. Imagine that. So being so hard with myself, learning the true meaning of being loving to myself through a dark night of the soul. That's the true testament of someone who can learn to love themselves again is loving themselves throughout the most painful things that ever happened through shame and grief and pain and regret and all the things. So I know that you may have gone through your own dark night of the soul or maybe going through it right now. My recommendation is A, learn to forgive yourself. There is no moving forward without forgiving yourself and you can transcend the season much more quickly if you learn to do that. And there's multiple books and videos on the subject, but making it a must and a practice is recommended. The second thing, which goes hand in hand with learning to forgive yourself, is doing the loving things, meaning having the self-discipline to do the things that you don't want to do, but have to do to get out in, in a healthy way. And that means you wake up one day and you don't want to exercise exercising. You won't want to cold plunge in, in, in cold water doing it. You won't want to sing or dance or do gratitude exercises doing them. You may not want to reach out to friends and family, reaching out to them. Doing the things that you need to do, not because you want to do them, but because you understand that doing them will put you in a place of learning, of loving and feeling and expressing and releasing and navigating without holding on to the pain indefinitely. Now, before I share my last two bits of advice with you today, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the number one reason you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of experience helping clients of all kinds of love challenges, pain points, and life stages to experience deep love again. And what I've done is I put it together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. And all you have to do if you want to participate is go to the first link. On the description of this video, you'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds or so, you have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a custom report based on your specific blind spot that's going to share the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the relationship you want in a fraction of the time. Advice number four is balance the romantic part of you with the strategic part of you. I've seen so many women who are really deeply connected to romantic ideas that are hurting them. Like, if it's love, it should happen uh, organically. It, it can't happen online if it's true love. Or the person that I want should almost read my mind and know what I want before I share it. And not necessarily with those words, but there's many types of experiences you can have that will go back to some idea you learned that you're not even sure where you learned it. So my bit of advice here is that when you're catching yourself, saying things to yourself 
that are more of a mythical, romantic, idealist in nature, that you balance them out with strategy. For example, if you feel like the person that you end up loving would never be online, question that feeling. Why is that? Question that thought. Why is that? It's the same thing as saying the person that I'm going to hire for this endeavor, it's not on LinkedIn seeking a job. I mean, this is just a method of connecting. So I think that if you know that there's a strategy you can develop to vet men properly, to put yourself out there, to date more than one guy at a time, to take time to get to know someone, to take time before you become physical or sexual with someone. If you develop a strategy that works, you can find the romance you're looking for faster than if you revert back to, it should just happen naturally. If it's in the cards for me, it will be brought up. Like, you don't think this way about anything in life. Why do you think about it in love? You would never put yourself out there saying, well, if the job is meant for me, it will just land on my lap. No, you're searching for a job and you'll, you'll find it, right? Similar thing. This is something too serious and too important to be left to chance. So figure out a way to learn more strategies on how you can shortcut this process. The last thing I'll share today is you are a unique human being. You are special and irreplaceable. Don't try to be liked by everyone. Don't try to be attractive to every man. Don't try to vanilla yourself up in such a way that more people find you appealing, but in reality, no one finds you truly connected and heart open. Make sure that you continue learning who you are and express who you are clearly, unequivocally, unapologetically in such a way that the human beings, the men who are out there, who are seeking for you, can find you, can, can see you, can smell you, metaphorically speaking from a distance, instead of trying to break through walls to get to know who you are because you're hiding, hoping that he likes you more. Play up your strengths. When you play up your quirkness, your uniqueness, your differences, not that you can't learn, not that you can't improve, but that you're not ashamed of who you are. You've forgiven yourself for the things that you've done or haven't done that you think you should by now. And you're really loving yourself, then you can be free, take up space and connect with human beings from a very deep space of acceptance and self-love which they will want to experience from you. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I get the chance to grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe to this channel and if you're interested in learning how you can continue attracting the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.